We have a really distinguished panel of online retailers with us today, and we're really fortunate to have them here with us at Fashion Forward. And I hope we can gain a lot out of this conversation with them. Um, it's no surprise that we like to shop in the region. You just have to take a walk through Dubai Mall or Mall of the Emirates to figure that out. Um, but we also seem to be, in the Middle East, a very touch-and-feel oriented uh, consumer base. And what does that mean for online retailing? And when we talk about reshaping buying habits here, I think that's a lot of what we're looking at. And we really have the experts here with us. Um, I'm going to take a quick moment, to, uh, for those of you who don't know them, to introduce our panelists. Um, to my left, Ahmed Al-Khatib. He established the Jordan-based flash retailer, Marka VIP, in November of 2010. Um, and adapted basically the tried and tested flash sales model to suit local customers and retailers in the Middle East. Since he established it, they have more than 4 million registered users. Um, and prior to doing that, Ahmed worked in Silicon Valley for 10 years, so he really brings a wealth of experience. He last worked as Director of Infrastructure and Operations at Zazzle, and in his very early years in Silicon Valley, worked on um, some big brands like eBay and Amazon.com. Um, next to him, uh, we have Hassam Arab, who's the co-founder and managing director of Namshi, one of the Middle East's largest online fashion retailers. Namshi was lost in just launched in just 2011 and now carries over 400 brands um, online and are operating throughout the Gulf. Um, Hassam came, but prior to going online, he comes from an investment background where he worked in private equity with Waha Capital in Abu Dhabi. And um, that probably served him well because many of you may know that um, just a year after launching, they secured $34 million in funding from international investors. So they're obviously doing something right. Um, and last uh, but not least, we have Delphine Ede. Delphine is the co-founder of Diwani, which is a, parent, a digital media company that's the parent company for several different websites, which many of you may know. One is yasmina.com, which is a fashion and beauty portal for women. Um, they have a fam family-oriented site called Ayati, excuse my Arabic if I pronounced it wrong, um, a video channel called Dunyati, and um, perhaps most interestingly to us, um, a fashion e-commerce site called Muda.com, which carries 90% locally based designers. So very interesting for us here. She has um, one of the largest captive audiences in the region for content, female audiences in the region, with 5 million unique monthly visitors on her site. Um, and just last month, French digital publisher Webedia purchased a majority stake um, in their company. So there's a lot of expansion going on there. Um, so I'm just going to st go straight into the questions. And the first um, to all of you is to you know, really describe your business yourself to us. Um, you know, digital is hard to monetize, as we know. But the one way to do it is through products. And you're all doing that quite differently. So I'll start with you, Ahmed. Could you tell us about what you guys do in a nutshell? Sure. Uh, so we launched Marka VIP in November of 2010. We've been online for roughly three years uh, and some change. Um, uh, as Ritu mentioned, we have 4 million members. We've got 1.2 million fans uh, on Facebook. Uh, we're 400 employees. We're operating in eight markets today uh, in the GCC, Jordan, and Lebanon. Uh, we also have offices in Belgium, in Madrid, Spain, in Turkey, uh, and we've got some buyers in Los Angeles, as well as locally in Dubai uh, and Lebanon. We are uh, a flash sales uh, uh, website, very similar to Guild if you know Guilt or Vente Privé in France. Uh, and we work directly with brands and we are part of their uh, life cycle in terms of uh, selling their products and, and reaching a, a huge, uh, huge market. Uh, so today, Marca VIP uh, is also on mobile. We have uh, 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 an application both for uh, iPhone and for Android. And every day we're adding roughly 10 to 15,000 new members uh, on, on our uh, mobile platform. And this just is a reaffirmation of what Ritu was talking about in terms of the mobile penetration. A lot of the people today are buying their products uh, uh, using mobile. So Marka VIP really is a platform to enable local designers uh, to go online, but also uh, to uh, help established brands sell off their unsold inventory or their past season inventory, as well as any rare collections that they may, that they may have to our 4 million plus uh, member base. Yeah. All right, uh, my name is Hussam Arab. Um, I'm the uh, managing director and co-founder of Namshi.com. We are the, uh, the largest full-price in-season fashion retailer in the market uh, on online. Uh, so what we do is we sell product that you find 
um, in the stores, in the malls, um, all over the world. So it's it's in-season product. We're not looking at uh, discounted. That's a, just making the difference between us and uh, and Marca. Um, and uh, and we've been around for a little over two years right now. We have about 400 brands, as uh, as Ritu said, a little over 400 brands, and we're adding new brands every day. But we also uh, you know, we we look for we look for brands that are working, and we move on brands that are not working. Uh, and and that's something that we're we're quite focused on. So it's a very curated website. We have a group of buyers that work with the brands, that work with the uh, the, uh, the designers, and look for product that we we believe suits the market, uh, both from a fashionability and, and and trend perspective, but also from a pricing perspective. Um, and so there's a, no, a lot of knowledge that we ex exchange th with the brands that we work with, um, be it on on where they should sell, what kind of product they should be looking at uh, at uh, providing us. Uh, and hence the opportunity as well for some of the designers that are available over here. Um, you know, there's a lot of knowledge uh, that we can exchange, and, and uh, on top of that, then there's the exposure into uh, very large markets. And, and by the large markets, we're currently um, focusing on the GCC only, uh, so uh, primarily Saudi Arabia and, uh, and the UAE. Um, we're looking at the rest of the GCC, but, uh, but for, for now, it is uh, primarily those two markets. Delphine, you've done content and now e-commerce. Can you tell us a little bit um, specifically about Muda.com and what your mission is with it? So uh, we decided to launch uh, Muda.com a year ago. So it's a quite recent project. And uh, when I decided to launch Muda, I felt that the market and the regional designers were ready to be online. And we decided to create a platform to be able to uh, support them it's, of course, an e-commerce, but we offer many other things around Muda, like content. Uh, sometimes designers ask us also to advise, us, uh, advise them on uh, social media, finance. Uh, so it's, it's really a, it's a project that we started around Arab designers mm -hmm. first. And we thought that uh, our uh, female media that we had on yasmina.com would be a good help. To, uh, to have them emerge, and um, Muda was really created in synergy with Yasmina, with your content. Okay, so in some ways we have a really good representation here because we have sort of the incubator in a way. You, a designer can start off with you, and then hopefully if all goes well, they can reach a larger audience with you, and then when they really produce a lot, then they can have a flash sale with you. Is Absolutely, yeah. That kind of how it goes. Now, you obviously already have emerging designers with you. Is Namshi have any regional-based designers, or what is your product mix so right now? Our product mix is largely uh, well-known uh, brands that have a presence in this market, but we also have a bring about 60% of our brands that do not have a presence in this market, and that is why we are from Scandinavian brands to US, European, uh, Australian, and so on. Um, our, our target audience, though, really is, or, or currently has been, very much a uh, a high street offering. We're 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 not a luxury uh, a luxury retailer, and we don't we don't uh, communicate that we are. Uh, but obviously, there is there is room in what we do as well to to go slightly higher than, than you know, and, and slightly as more aspirational, uh, which which a lot of people in this market also uh, also appreciate. Uh, so we've worked with local designers that have uh, a more expensive offering, if you will, um, and and the way that they do it generally is. You know, Buying online is a challenge, and buying online in this market is a challenge for people that don't know the product, that don't know, um, you know, are they going to get the product? Are they going to? Uh, is it too much of a risk to spend a large amount of uh, money on a product they don't they don't know and can't touch? Uh, and therefore, one of the easiest way for uh, ways for some of the uh, more uh, luxury designers, if you will, is is to create diffusion lines that we work with. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's something that we've we've done in the past, and, and it's actually been quite. Successful. And do they act specifically create them to be on on them sheets? Exactly. That so happen? we we exchange with them uh, information about what what product sells, what price mm -hmm. points sell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have a lot more product, but uh, we'll be very honest with them and tell them that that's something that probably wouldn't work, and, and that's a price point that you probably shouldn't be focusing on. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to reach a, a broader audience in, in the markets that we. Uh, that we address, then, then there are other ways that you, in which you can do it. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, how about uh, Marka VIP? Do you yeah. work with emerging <clears throat> designers we or do, regional we talent? We do. We do. In fact, uh, uh, one of the biggest categories on Marka VIP is um, abayas and scarves and, and local Arab designs. And we actually just featured uh, Anas Yunus. I don't know if he's in the room. Uh, hey, Anas. 
-hmm. And uh, uh, you know what we do for for the local designers uh, is really uh, we're a launchpad for them uh, to offer a, a massive uh, database of Arab consumers and uh, uh, be, you know communicate directly with with those customers in their inbox. Mm -hmm. So we send shots every single day to four million people. We also send notifications to their uh, uh, phones. We communicate with them on our huge Twitter following and on our uh, huge uh, fan uh, fan base on on Facebook. So it's it's a very good way for them to be uh, noticed uh, on on, mm -hmm. on our platform. And it's a very big category for us. We're trying to grow it right now, mm -hmm. but as uh, as uh, Delphine and uh, Hussam mentioned, it takes time to to work with these uh, emerging designers because they're not optimized uh, for for the e-commerce model. They're not you know they, they don't have uh, photo shoots, which is why we have studios in in uh, in Jordan. We have a studio in Madrid, Spain. We have a studio in Turkey, and now we're launching a huge studio in Dubai to be able to uh, uh, let's say merchandise virtually merchandise mm -hmm. the portfolio of uh, of uh, these uh, these Arab designers. But we also carry uh, Chanel, vintage Louis Vuitton. We carry mm -hmm. Prada and Javinci and Gucci. So we've got everything uh, from the very high-end brand names to mm -hmm. uh, the mainstream uh, uh, brands as well. And the Arab designer segment specifically is going to become our focus for 2014. But just to get a sense of the audience, how many, how many of the people are designers, if you just raise your hand? OK, very good. Um, one of the things that's of concern to designers and the design community is, is how do we get the retailers to have faith in us? What do we need? To, and, and we often focus on the bricks and mortar model. Um, so everyone is going to the larger retailers and saying, why aren't you buying us or at least take us? What, what is it that we need to do to prove that we're good enough to, to be with you? Um, Delphine, I'm going to start with you because you specifically have worked with a lot of local designers and you're actually really working to elevate them and bring them to a certain level. Can you tell us about what some of the challenges are and, and what type of product you would take and what you wouldn't on your site? Um, Again, for us today, I don't decide on what I take or not. I work with a designer and we decide what we would like to feature online, what would fit the brand image and what would fit Muda's image. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think we have today enough experience uh, to say for a young designer or a, even a young brand online to say that will work and that will not work. And again, it's to show everything a brand can do and to talk about a brand and to create um, a brand image for the designer. That's the most important thing for me. Create the content around the brand, the brand image, and educate the consumer about, for example, uh, the, uh, the value of a product. We often hear uh, it's a local designer, uh, it's too expensive, but sometimes they put a lot of work and passion mm -hmm. and hours of you know, creation and production in a piece, so we need to explain that to the users. So it's really an advertorial style model. So you're taking your content background and applying that to a certain extent um, in yeah. creating the story <laughs> with the product. Um, and how about for Namshi? So I think Delphine was, was talking to us in the, uh, in the back about uh, one, one of the challenges that you're facing is, is just reliability and I guess professionalism and overall understanding of, of how the, the value chain of, uh, of design works. And I think... I think that's probably something that's quite important uh, is is that the designer is reliable, right? We're 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 putting a lot of faith in a, in a designer to bring them online, to promote their product, uh, to uh, to talk about them and to market them to our to our customers, and and as such, we obviously put a lot of planning around that. So we need to know that you know, if if you are uh, if you are promoting an SS15 product, then SS15 starts in in, in January February, right? And that, therefore, we need to have that product on time. We need to have um, the uh, the amount of product that we that we agreed on. Um, there's a lot of just you know reliability that that is quite important. Um, but it's our role also to help the designers absolutely. get there and help them understand that they need to be on time on the fashion calendar, and that there are rules to follow in the in the fashion sure. industry. Yeah. And um, so it's a mentorship role to a certain extent as, as e-tailers. Sometimes when the designer, when we have a good relation with the designer, and I see some of them here, yes, sometimes they, they ask for advice and we, we have really mm -hmm. a, a, a two-way conversation. It's really, yeah. really yeah. nice. Ahmed, for you, how do you, like you mentioned that Anis has had sales on your site before, how do you find these local designers or regionally based designers 
or do they find you? What's the uh, best both way? Both ways. So we've got over 35 buyers that are scouring the market looking for the best designers, the best products. We look at uh, blogs. We follow the fashion news and the trends. Uh, but a lot of them also come directly to our website just because of our sheer size uh, and, and our marketing uh, uh, budget. Uh, I think what's important for the up-and-coming designers is to give people what they want. A lot of the designers, as I mentioned to you, are very emotional about their art, <laughs> that they forget about what actually the consumer is looking for. And the way we help, for example, is when, when the designer is willing to take some risk in producing you know, a, a, a good enough quantity to feature on our website, is we give them back this feedback. Mm -hmm. We provide them with customer analytics. We let them know what sizes are popular, what colors are popular, what people are saying about this design versus this design. And it's important for the designer to take this feedback on and, and change their designs for the next season or <clears throat> whatever uh, season that, that, that they're going to be producing for and really giving people what they want. Not what, what I think is going to look good on me, but what I think is going to look good on, on my customers and my consumers. And the best way to do that is to go online. Uh, the future is online. Uh, all the brands are racing to, to uh, go online and to be visually merchandised online. So I think the focus for these designers should be to reach a much larger audience uh, very early on so that they can adapt their offering, they can adapt their art and their creation to that market. Uh, going after the offline brick and mortar stores, I think, is a waste of time. And, and the reason why we exist is, 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 is to bring all the consumers uh, uh, online. So I think that they should take that risk. Mm -hmm. They should embrace uh, 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 online and, and uh, you know work work with uh, us or, or whatever other online retailer that can feature them very quickly to their customers so that they can get early feedback mm -hmm. about their products. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that feedback is quite key. Um, there are some challenges to online online retailing. I mean, <clears throat> as I mentioned when we began, this part of the world is a little bit slower to adopt um, in general because you know we tend to be very touch and feel and service oriented. Now. We know you offer a story to go along with it. What are um, Namshi and Marka VIP doing to kind of cater to the regional customer in terms of service offerings, specifically, whether it be delivery or whether it be the experience online? Sure. So you know, it, is, it is a risky endeavor for, for a customer to shop online in the first place if, if they don't know the product, if, uh, if they're going to prepay for it and, uh, and so on. So the, there is a bit of an inherent risk in that, but uh, and, and our job really is to make that risk or reduce the, the size of that risk. And, and some of the things that we can do, obviously, is, is check the product ourselves and obviously do a lot of cute, uh, quality checking to make sure that the product is something that we're going to be proud of selling. Uh, but beyond that, then there is our communication on the product, so you know, making sure that that the uh, the product is shot the right way, that it's that it's uh, the copy on the product is is, uh, is set in the right way, and then finally it's it's the delivery. So we offer people a cash on delivery service, which uh, takes a lot of the risk about uh, of prepaying for a product uh, and and just making sure that I can get to see it and I can get to touch it. Uh, so cash on delivery is is a key offering, uh, and then beyond that uh, there is also the the very fast delivery. So one of the main reasons that we make sure that we need to hold on to all our stock and, and have it in our warehouses because we deliver to all our customers in the UAE, same day, next day. Uh, and and uh, for customers that are buying online, I think there is a lot of, uh, it is largely an impulse buy and they like to see the product as soon as they, uh, as soon as they buy it. Uh, so that takes an additional risk mm -hmm. out of it. And finally then there's the free returns. Uh, so we need to make sure as well that the, the customer has the option of returning the product mm -hmm. and returning it quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we do offer, uh, trial on delivery, uh, which a lot of uh, customers value. Um, they, they don't like the product, they, it doesn't fit. They return it same day and, and the whole transaction is, is pretty much closed. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a few, a few steps that we can take to reduce that risk um, of, of people that are used to shopping in, in the offline setting. Um, and, and most importantly, I think one, one of the big value propositions that we offer is, aside from the, the variety, is uh, the convenience. It is an extremely convenient uh, model of shopping right now. It, uh, going to Dubai Mall on a Saturday afternoon is not a fun experience for most people. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the convenience aspect is something that is really starting to, to get uh, to gain ground. Mm -hmm. And Ahmad, in your experience, um, Marka VIP, and mm -hmm. I know you do have a special VIP service that you offer customers mm -hmm. on, on delivery. Sure. Can you tell us more yeah. about that? Uh, so th I, I disagree that the region is slow in terms of adapting uh, 
the internet and shopping online. I think it's more the, the government's not enabling uh, 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 companies like us operate and support the convenience model that uh, Hussam was talking about, of a customer seeing a product online, uh, buying it, uh, receiving it, uh, then returning it all within a seamless kind of a transaction. I think this is what we've worked very hard and we've invested millions of dollars in infrastructure. Marca VIP today delivers over 50% of its orders itself using our own cars and our own drivers. We actually uh, go out to the customer's house uh, for our VIP customers. Uh, our driver will wait while the customer is trying the product on uh, uh, and we give them that, that, that comfort and that security to shop, mm -hmm. shop online. Um, uh, what else are we doing? Uh, we have local call centers in uh, uh, the major markets. So we're allowing the customer to call an 800 number. Uh, we speak the language. We understand uh, their, uh, their mentality. And we're providing localized support. We are an Arab company, and, and we realize that in order for us to cater to these consumers, we, we have to understand them and be uh, uh, where, where they are. Uh, but in terms of savviness, they're extremely savvy, right? I mean, the, the Arab revolution is just one, one, uh, 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 you know, one way to think of how savvy this, uh, this region is. Yeah. What are some of the um, concerns? Well, one of them actually I'm going to ask you about is, is um, there are some concerns among some of the designers that there are counterfeit pieces out there um, that are being sold online. And there was a lot of buzz around that, you know, recently. What do you do to ensure that doesn't happen? I don't know if, uh, you know, maybe that's a bigger issue if you sell bigger brands. Delphine, is that an issue for you guys? That's not an issue for you. With, with the larger brands or the luxury brands, um, you know, how do you make sure? Is there a process you go through yourself? Do you hold the inventory yourself, make sure that it is authentic? You know, because of the, the massive discount that we give our customers, it's unbelievable that they get a product back for 50% off or 60% off. So yeah, it's definitely questionable. Uh, but we do that by working directly with the brands or their agents. We actually have quality uh, control people that know the brands, that they know the stitching, they know the quality of the product, and it goes through a lot of checks and balances before it uh, it goes online. However, there's there's a lot there are a lot of websites that are selling uh, counterfeit products. But with Marca VIP uh, repeat buyer rate at 80%, uh, there's no question that the, that the product that they're receiving is uh, it, uh, it are authentic. So I think it's a lot of consumer education about the mm -hmm. product life cycle, right? You know, if you're buying last season's uh, or, you know, last summer's inventory, it's going to be at a much cheaper price when you acquire from the brand because it's liquidation at the end of the day. So if we educate the customers about the life cycle of, of, of a fashion brand, I think uh, uh, they'll become much more comfortable with, uh, uh, with, with buying online. The second thing is that, that this is a very inventory inefficient market, right? A lot of these designers probably are going to face issues with regards to how much inventory they, they, they carry. So they need solutions like Marca VIP. We become just an additional channel of revenue for them. And it's also their job to uh, uh, communicate to the market and educate the market about their brand being on Marca VIP, whether it's reaching out to their, uh, their followers or their fan base or uh, you know, co-marketing with, mm -hmm. with, uh, with, with Marca VIP. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to move to a slightly different topic, and that's actually now technology. I'm, I'm conscious that we're a little bit short on time. And we talked about what, what you can offer um, to startups, and that's that you're, you're a broad base and you reach a lot of people um, very quickly. But there's also certain technologies that you can offer and data that we touched upon a little sure. bit. Um, I'll start with you, Delphine. Um, how, what can you offer as an online retailer, specifically in terms of technology, that a bricks and mortar store wouldn't to a young designer. Today, I think at Muda we offer the platform, the e-commerce platform. The designer don't pay for any of it, and they have their own space and brand page. And we're working towards more personalization for each brand to have its own uh, space. I think also what's important to me, and uh, uh, we mentioned it a bit before, is the customer care. And often brands, for example, don't have the means because they're small teams and they concentrate on the creation and they should, they don't have time to deal with the orders, the question they have on the items they're selling. And um, I think at Muda we have a very strong customer care today. 
And it's more than just customer care on uh, how is it going to ship and how much it costs. It's really sometimes uh, styling an, out an outfit for someone. We receive picture of the eye of a, of a girl sometimes because we, we carry makeup with L'Oréal Paris and they send us the picture of their just their eyes and they ask us, I have big eyes, small eyes, what should I use, how should I do it? And um, so this is something I'm not sure a brand, for example, would be able to uh, to do alone. Mm -hmm. So we have also questions about uh, wearing this red wedding uh, at a wedding, this red dress at a wedding. Which uh, clutch should I carry with it? So it goes much. I think it's a step further than just uh, regular customer care. Right. Um, there's also technology solutions that are being implemented. I know a lot of the larger retail sites are starting to use that. Um, <coughs> eBay just bought a new technology that's going to enable people to essentially try on clothes online. Is this something that you see happening for regionally based sites as well? Are you starting to incorporate technology into it? A lot, a lot of other companies have, have tried this virtual virtual fitting room and virtual fit, uh, shopping. I think there's there's it's still in, in its infancy. There's always problems with that. Uh, I don't think it's something that is that is ready that the market is ready for uh, just yet. I know eBay bought it, but there is there's companies in Europe that have used it and it hasn't been uh, and I think the main reason that they use it is to try to reduce return rates which return rates in in our model is a challenge it's something that uh, that a lot of e-commerce sites um, uh, find uh, find quite restricting uh, to their growth and, the, and what are their, your return rates can I ask so return the nice thing about this market and I think it's 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 uh, it's two-sided right there the nice thing about this market is return rates are very low the problem with that is that means that pro people are not trying. Uh, they're still they're still too careful from shopping online. So return rates in more mature markets, uh, e -com more mature e-commerce markets are upwards of forty to fifty percent. For us, they're below ten percent, which which does not make sense. It, 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 we're not much better than a, a European e-commerce mm -hmm. player um, in terms of in terms of giving people information mm -hmm. about sizing. It's mm -hmm. the same information that we we provide them. I think customers in this market are one. Not uh, they they're, they're not as readily uh, comfortable with returning product, but I think more importantly, they're not as readily uh, ready. No, they're not as they're ready not, to buy product. They're not product. buying in as large numbers. Yeah. So uh, I, I think that's once we get to higher return rates, that's actually a good thing. I think for for yeah. this model because that means more people are uh, are adapting to it. Now you all launched fairly recently. I mean, all you know, all of you are less than what four years old. Um, how have there is this challenge of trust in, in online, um, you know, payment systems and delivery and just the whole experience over the, the last four years or three years or you know one year since you've been operating? Where have where have you seen that story going? Is it sure. is the trust issue getting better now? Sure, I'd like to answer your first question though. So, um, Marca VIP today spends over two million dollars a month on marketing, merchandising, studio production. Uh, and customer care. That's a massive budget. And for a local designer, uh, can enjoy being a part of this budget without spending $1 marketing their brand. So this is one thing that Marca VIP can do. Along with the studios that we have, uh, we will uh, work directly with you to produce the photo shots exactly as you want. And I know some people are extremely specific about that. Anise is one of those guys. Uh, and so we work directly with, with these brands to help them, again, uh, 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 go go online and Marca VIP Marca VIP's budget by far is one of the largest budgets mm -hmm. uh, for the e-commerce companies here to to enable these uh, uh, these designers to go online. In terms of uh, the trust is issue, uh, today for us, 85% of um, our orders are cash on delivery basis. So there's zero risk for the customers uh, uh, to try uh, buying a product from from Marca VIP. There's also re zero risk. For the designer, uh, so if a customer, uh, if we show up and we want to deliver an item from a local designer and uh, the customer is not there or doesn't want to take it or doesn't want to pay for it, we don't return that product back to the designer. We actually keep it with us and we feature it again uh, 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 to our consumers. So I, I don't think that the trust issue is a big issue for us right now. And from my experience, uh, you know, I was in the Valley in 1996 when Amazon was just first starting. And it's the same exact situation today uh, in the Middle East. There was actually cash on delivery in the United States very early on. So that trust issue is something that this region will get over uh, at some point in time. And I don't think that uh, we have to do anything special besides just continuing to educate the consumer about the convenience of, of shopping online. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> Any thoughts on this? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, what product sells best online? I'm going to start with you, Delphine. Is it accessories? Uh, is it a bias because they don't have, they're not as size oriented necessarily? Um, for us, it's uh, uh, we thought accessories would sell, you know, better because you don't have to try them on and all. But uh, actually, fashion sells pretty well. Fashion, including abaya, but also any type of, uh, of fashion, not only abaya. Yes. So it means people do have trust in sizing systems now? And yes, they do. And again, they spend a lot of time on the phone with our customer care. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, sometimes they talk to the designer directly to ask them exactly mm -hmm. what they would like. Uh, we have a, a network of seamstresses in different Arab um, cities. So we can send them to the house of the customer to you know arrange the length of a dress mm -hmm. or something. So I think this whole uh, experience uh, help them, of course. Is your model based on actually keeping the product in a warehouse? Um, or no, do we, don't, we, don't keep a, uh, we don't keep products, very, very little products. So we work directly with the designer. Once we have like an order, we call the designer and we work on the piece. Either they have it in stock or they produce it for the, for the customer. Okay, so quite a different model than Numsheet because you yes. need to deliver right away. You've invested a lot of that cash into building out warehouses. But something um, we were mentioning also before, like the delivery timings are important. Mm -hmm. It's true, but when a customer really wants a piece from a designer, sometimes they're ready to wait like even mm -hmm. one month. We and tried to offer... reduce that, but we, we had, uh, we had uh, the example many times, and we were calling the customer saying, it's being done, don't worry, we're working. And she was like, it's fine, I'm yeah. waiting for it, I want it. Does and that speak so to the fact that maybe you offer something they can't find anywhere else? Ex yes, and, exactly. And perhaps your product offering yeah, I think that's is... the difference between as well high street and, uh, and uh, luxury, uh, right. or more premium products. Uh, in high street, people would like the immediate satisfaction. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to go to Zara and wait mm -hmm. a month for a product. Um, Whereas, so uh, that, that's one, one part of it. The other well, part the, the, the products that sell yeah. best for you. So, okay. so for you, it was clothing. So what, for us, work on we, we initially launched with footwear, and we thought that that was the easiest product to sell online, given that people know their sizing to a certain mm -hmm. extent. You know, it's, uh, there's not much air, room for error there. Uh, but we, uh, we quickly launched apparel uh, soon after that, and we found that apparel sells extremely well, uh, and return rates are not that high, but uh, as well, we discussed mm -hmm. that. Uh, number one best-selling product for us in apparel is dresses, um, and, uh, and you can go across the entire spectrum of what dresses uh, sell. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of party wear sells over here. Party wear sells sells extremely well in Saudi Arabia, which is which is quite surprising. So we find people buying an abaya uh, an abaya with a, a short uh, you know uh, bodycon dress, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's quite surprising, but it but it works extremely well. Uh, so dresses have been big for us. Um, footwear is the other thing. Uh, Menswear is doing extremely well, um, and largely uh, in Saudi Arabia as well. Um, so very few categories have not have not worked, and whatever hasn't worked, we've kind of exited quite quickly. Um, uh, Abayas and traditional wear actually work uh, very very well for us as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my CFO is sitting right there. So I can't talk a lot of numbers, but I'll give you guys some some color. Uh, for us, our biggest category is actually watches and accessories uh, and handbags. Handbags uh, is a massive category for us. So um, one top handbag, I think, did over $300,000 in sales in 24 hours. You can't uh, mention what that top handbag is. I can't. <laughs> uh, our top Abaya brand did $85,000 in 24 hours. Uh, and so uh, watches and accessories, handbags are massive for us. Apparel is huge uh, as well. And what the region specifically likes here are the, the uh, evening dresses, like the evening party dresses, massive category on Market VIP. Uh, so those are the, the top brands on So the, I imagine whether it's a regionally based designer or an international designer, that would probably be the same. Uh, the regional based designers actually that get it uh, can outperform any, any designer uh, from uh, abroad. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, some of the Abayas brands, uh, they, they generate that much money only in, in 24 hours. And we have flash sales so it's only there for three days mm -hmm. and we create a lot of buzz around it before you know we feature the event we talk about the event we may do a, a video uh, 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 of the event uh, we may do some specific photo shooting uh, you know in, in the emirates or wherever the the brand uh, is but uh, uh, the designers that know their consumers uh, have m huge results on on uh, market vip and we're very happy with mm -hmm. that
Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what exactly is the secret sauce? You obviously have to have much, much more than an amazing product and the platform is already readily available out there. So can you tell us a little bit? So for us, I think, you know, I, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but really thinking about what the customer wants. Uh, the, the products, you might love the products, you might have what you think is the most, most amazing product, but really it is, what is the customer looking for? Uh, how would they like to shop? How would, you, how would they like to communicate with you? How are you gonna deliver to them? Uh, delivery obviously is an, is an issue. If, you're, if you just have a Shopify account, uh, you're not going to, you know, using third parties to deliver your product to them uh, is not, is not going to help. Uh, so there's a lot of added complexity than just having a, a website where you can show the product um, that you're selling. So yes, I think, I think it's easy to start a, an e-commerce website, uh, but beyond that, there's a lot of challenges and, and, uh, and, the, and the people behind them really need to do, a, there's a lot of focus that needs to happen. Um, acro across the entire value chain. I think if I, you yeah. share your metrics, sorry, just going back, you do share your metrics with your, with your retailers because with that's... The, with the brands that we work with. With the brands yes. you work yeah. with, so like what, uh, what sells, what isn't selling, exactly. what, what's being viewed, what's where, not. Where is it selling, uh, what ages are buying their products, mm -hmm. uh, what gender uh, obviously prefers the product. Uh, so there's a lot of information, uh, but, but they can get that as well from, from a Shopify account. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, but I mean, you know, the, the, there is a lot of complexity beyond just having a, a, a site where you display product. Yeah, you were saying yes, um, It's an interesting question, and we, um, we often talk to designers that tell us, okay, Muda, we love it, it's great, but we're going to launch our own uh, e-commerce platform. And um, at some point, launching your own e-commerce platform is not your job. You should concentrate on being creative, on doing consistent collection, on being on time. And let us, or Muda, or other website, help you distribute your product online. And I think you're stronger, and you'll be stronger if you attract an audience with one, two, ten, fifty brands than just having one uh, single website. And I'm talking again about new or young designers, not even emerging, even designers that that have been but here for a few years. And if you see um, just a, an international example today, Kering, uh, so who manages lots of luxury brands, they don't manage their own e-commerce. They gave it to Yox, which is like a big e-commerce platform, and they manage the e-commerce of all those brands. I mean, we saw that over here as well. So we spent about a year speaking with Adidas when we first wanted to launch and, and trying to get them on, onto our website. And the, the argument throughout that time was, we want to do our own thing. We're looking at launching our own e-commerce website, and that's Adidas. And a year later, they said, listen, guys, we're just going to give it to you. Uh, we'll learn from you. We'll learn e-commerce from you. And then, and then exactly. we might open our, uh, start our own thing at a later time. But you know, it, it, is, it is essential that designers focus on their core competency, which is design and product, and, and leave a lot of the other stuff to, to people that are going to be focusing on that. Yeah. And creating an audience for an e-commerce website is very, very difficult. Yeah. And I know at Diwani, like our expertise is creating audiences and female audiences, and it's not an easy job, and it's quite technical as well. So, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's not easy. Again, the Shopify and all these platforms, yeah, they're easy to start with. But again, I would I, I, just to reaffirm what uh, Delphine was saying: uh, the brands should focus on what they know best and what they do best. We're technologists; we're not fashion people, Hassan and I, at least, obviously. And uh, <laughs> it's just like me trying to launch a, a handbag brand. I wouldn't know where to start. So, you know, leave the bread for the baker and we can really help you. We've got massive audiences and huge marketing budgets. And it's just a, a click away and your brand will be in front of uh, millions of, of people overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to ask, I do know that m on most e-commerce uh, sites, it's all about consignment and it's not much... Um, you guys buying our products right. so sometimes that can be a challenge for designers to um, invest in their next collection for the next season in order to be consistent and on time so would that habit ever change would there ever be the chance of e-commerce sites actually buying rather than just um, investing on consignment absolutely so we've started with a lot of brands on consignment and usually that's uh, for us to understand the brand better uh, and after the first season we've moved the designer onto outright buying because we have a much better understanding of, of their product and of their brand 
Uh, so in the first year, in the first season, there's a lot of feedback that we give the designer and, the, and that the designer uh, gives us. Um, and you know, we try to, you know, there's a risk that we take with the designer just as much as the, uh, the designer is taking with us. So for that uh, reason, the first season is usually on consignment. And then once we understand that product better, uh, it's, it usually moves into ad right. So definitely, you know, we're, we're not trying to hurt the, the local design community by, by uh, sticking them to consignment and, and keeping them uh, assigned to that for sure. So for, for Marca VIP, it's a little bit different. We do do consignment, but we actually ask you to block the products in your warehouse only for a very specific period of time, which is maximum 10 days. It's not really consignment. It's all, almost uh, uh, like buying. And as uh, Hossam mentioned, for us, once we know that your brand works, we're actually willing to invest in you producing. Uh, and, and you know, upfront, we'll give you money so that you can go out there and, and, and buy the... Uh, the, the, the the products that you need to produce uh, your abayas. It's just the first step of us being convinced, our customers being convinced of, of the product. Once that's done, we obviously want that stuff online every day. If Hi. Yeah, this yeah, um, yeah, this is mostly for Namshi. Um, you talk about instant, instant shopping, instant gratification. Um, Sorry, I couldn't understand. No, you're talking about shoppers, online shoppers, constantly looking for an instant buy. Sure. Um, so, I'm wondering, uh, and also you talked about seasons, the fashion season. So, I'm wondering, moving forward, is that going to change with the online shopping trends, where people want products now and um, instantly? Like, do you understand what I'm trying to ask you? Uh, I'm not clear on, on the question. Uh, so, <laughs> are, are you saying are people going to going to stop wanting st uh, product No, instantly? I'm not saying, I'm saying like, will the seasons stop being so strict? Like, will you have more seasons? Or, I mean, will you expect designers to be producing more constantly um, on, uh, and, uh, on your website? Okay, so uh, generally, I mean, there, there's, there's the spring, summer season and fall, winter season that we, we, we buy into. Uh, many brands have multiple drops throughout the season. Um, you know, I don't think that's something that we can control. The, that's in the hands of the brands. Uh, we're flexible with the brands that we work with. Um, instant gratification is something that, that a lot of people like, and I, I don't think that's something that's going to change. Obviously, uh, there is, there is uh, differences there in, what people, uh, in, in people's opinions and people's uh, needs, but uh, I, I think the two are... are quite unrelated. So honestly, I, I'm not sure I, I get the question, but... Uh, I'm just I, I'm, ask, I'm wondering, moving forward, if the season to season yeah. process of buying clothes is going to continue that way, or is online going to change that for I designers? I think online is going to completely change that the same way online is changing everything. And today, there, is, there are a couple of websites where you can actually buy uh, uh, before, before the product even goes into season, uh, uh, I forgot what the name of the website. I think Moda what is it called? Moda yeah, Modus Operandi, for example. So that's uh, so. What's after Modus Operandi? It's going to be very similar to what 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 you're thinking of. I think uh, uh, definitely uh, online is going to transform the way that the uh, the uh, fashion industry works because it's extremely inefficient. That you have to buy and produce six months ahead. In in my mind, and this is why companies like Inditex with Zara and Mango are very successful because they have a new collection almost every two to three weeks. So yeah, but, that will change. But that's basically it, yeah. I mean, their, their drops are very consistent throughout the year. So they'll have new product. They, they assign it to a certain season, but there's multiple product uh, drops throughout the year, and that changes consistently. Uh, and that's not just online, though. So online retailers can essentially buy at any time, whereas a lot of the bricks and mortars buy seasonally is essentially, I yeah. think, what she's getting at. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit <laughs> conscious of our time because I know Delphine has a flight to catch back to Beirut. Um, but thank you so very much, everyone, for coming, and thank you to our panelists. Thank you, guys.